Divine Truth Assistance Group. Group assistance sessions putting principles of divine truth into action. This recording is from the Developing My Loving Self group and is part of an Education in Love series. In session one personal feedback presentation, Jesus gives personal feedback regarding how to handle and release the emotions of terror and fear, gives details about his own process of releasing terror, and answers some audience questions about the subject. Recorded on the 22nd of May 2016 in New Seville, Queensland, Australia. Okay, what we're going to do is just a short discussion with Rani for probably 15 or so minutes and then I want to have a conversation with the group about another matter. So um, we're going to discuss Rani's question, which I'll read out first and then and then we'll have a discussion. Myself and Rani will have a discussion. All right. So you guys are right with the cameras and stuff? After we've finished Rani's discussion, it'll just take us a few minutes to move everything back again. Um, so if you just stay with your seats, that'd be good. Okay, well, Rani, nice to have you up front here with me. Hello. Thank you. Sometimes it's good to have company. <laughs> <laughs> Even though the other person's real nervous about it. <laughs> and it probably is appropriate considering you're a question. I'm terrified. <laughs> but not about being up here with me. I'm so nice. Um, I'm terrified to experience my emotional pain. When I realise this, I've had much turmoil um, in myself, inside myself, to, and knowing, the choice, uh, knowing that I'm going to have to make a choice and feel it. Since I've been stagnant and degrading my soul condition, so, so what you're basically saying is that after the last assistance group, 2014, you basically felt like, wow, I can feel that there's this terror there and I, I don't know whether I want to go there. And as a result, you've seen the results of you not wanting to go there as well, which is yeah. some degradation in terms of what, things that you do that have turned out negative for you. Yeah. yeah, and that's and that's a normal normal thing, of course. You know, whenever we purposefully choose to do something that's out of harmony with the love of self, in this case, there is going to be some negative consequences. So the question was, uh, could you please shed some light to help me discover my f my first blocks to challenge this fear? Now, yeah, the reason why I chose this, Rani, is because I just feel that this is where most people are at, to be honest, and. Uh, and most people who have done any work at all on their facade at all ha eventually get to this point, you know, where they're, where they're basically terrified now to go any further. And, uh, and you know, I can't say anything to you. That's the funny thing about it. <laughs> I can't. Because it's my will? Well, uh, when I say I can't say anything to you, what I mean is there's no, there's no trick to it. There's no... Um, special thing you have to do what what i found though was really important from from my own in my own perspective from my own perspective when i was going through a similar thing was that was that i had to sit with my feeling of terror i had to take longer and longer snapshots at sitting with my terror and what you've been doing is take trying to take shorter and shorter snapshots doing it right yeah so so my my advice really, it, it, once you get to this stage, and we'll talk more about this stage in a couple of days' time when we go through governing emotions and deconstructing the facade and so forth, but my my advice at this stage is practice just sitting, like having times alone where you just sit down and you let yourself, imagine yourself going there and you let the terror come up and you practice staying with the feeling of terror for as long as you possibly can. Right? And when I say as long as you possibly can, that's different to as long as you can. <laughs> because, because God created your soul to deal with it there and then, as it is. So the reality is that you can deal with it right there and then, but that's not what you're going to feel. What you're going to feel is that you can't, and then you'll be tempted to try to run away from it. And that's what I did yeah. a couple of months ago. Yeah. And 
now I'm seeing the repercussions of that and I'm just going, what the hell? What yeah. do I do now? <laughs> you yeah. You, you, when you're in this spot, it almost feels like um, you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't type of feeling. That's what it feels like. And, and so it's a spot where we generally desire to not do anything and then we see the repercussions of not doing anything, which are also going to be negative because they're out of har- not doing anything is ad- actually out of harmony with God's laws. So, so there's going to be repercussions for that. And then we feel like, oh, I don't want to go forward and I don't want to go back and I don't want to move here and I don't want to do that. So all I'm going to do is sit here in a tantrum, <laughs> not doing anything if I can. And really it is like there is a sort of a tantrum associated with it. Do you understand what I'm saying? And that's anger. And, and you need to let yourself feel how angry you feel about the fact that God's made it this way that you can't go forward, can't go back, can't, can't do anything, but you're going to have to go forward and you know you are. And, um, and let yourself feel some of that anger, let that out, and then you'll start and, and, and sit with the feeling of terror for as long as you possibly can. And when I say that, I mean as long as you believe you can. But what I would do is I would do it longer each day if it was me, because you want to get to the stage where you can handle it for, for days at a time, all the time. Because the, the, the longer you deal with it, the shorter it's going to be. The, lo- the longer time you stay in the emotion, the shorter the experience is going to be. Just to clarify that, so yep. basically do I think about an event? So let's say an event that just came up a couple of months ago and yeah. then just... I'd go to that event. Okay. If yep. You shut yourself down as a result of that event. So what you do is you go back to the event, you let yourself imagine doing something differently, right? What what doing something in harmony with love would look like, and you let yourself sit there and imagine yourself taking the action, and just allow yourself to to feel the terror that comes up as a result. Now, even better than that would be to actually take the action you avoided. Well, I'm co- now that's what I'm thinking. I need to do yeah. is build those steps to to correct that yeah um yeah but i don't know if i'm just running away from the fear of it or well the key is to do that but still feel you see you see what the problem is is you don't want to feel so so the key is to to build up a tolerance if you like an emotional tolerance to the emotion of terror and and that requires it's going to require you being able to sit in that emotion for as, for longer periods of time. Because I get stuck when events happen, like let's say just at work, and then I come home and I try and think about it, but then I'm like, it feels like it's already gone. So is that just an a resistance there to go back into it? or? Well, when, when that happens, uh, you know, the, ti- the time to do something is in the situation always. That is the best time. You know, it's always going to be the best time. The choice to not do the right thing in a situation always comes from, from, in other words, not do a loving thing in the situation is always coming from fear. If you do the loving thing in the situation, you will naturally feel your fear. And, and therefore, this is where taking action is always going to be a good thing. But for most people, they must first build up a... Um, Basically, what I'm su- suggesting is build up a sensitivity to fear, a, a, a desire to actually feel the emotion. Most of us, as soon as we have any small, even tiny feeling of fear, we're already off doing our thing in addiction, trying to avoid it, right? And, that, and that's always going to cause a lot of tra- trauma and problems later down the track anyway. So, so I feel that you need to be able to sit with that terror-based emotion. And that means putting yourself in the situations where, where the thing you're terrified of is either happening or you imagine it happening and allowing yourself to build your, your sensitivity to the emotion, allow yourself to actually feel the emotion rather than running away from it, rather than using food or... There's a big one for you, food, or, or you know, some cases it's things like stimulants, like coffee and other things to get out, and or or sometimes it's depressants like alcohol or other things to get out of the actual feeling of fear. The feeling of fear is is going to be the most difficult feeling to feel, but it's also ironically the uh, what I'd classify as the most 
Um, Free? Like well, it is afterwards, yeah, obviously, but I'm talking during. Um, I want to, I'm trying to find the right words to put it so that it, you don't get the wrong connotation, but fear is all based on lies. So any fear that we actually have is all a figment of the false beliefs and false definitions of love that the pain, the hurt self has. So it's all based on lies. It's all, it's all in almost imaginary, but imaginary is not the right word because it is it real. real. You feel it as, a, as an emotion of terror. But, but, but it's actually not real from God's perspective. It's not, it doesn't need to be there. It's, it's one of those emotions that, that once we've felt it, we realise how much we've been looking after it, nursing it and valuing it. When, when it's really silly to do so because cause, cause usually none of what you fear ever happens, right? And if it has happened, it usually happened in the past and it hasn't happened again. And, and this is the thing about fear is we need to come to see how, how much of a, an, a, 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 of a manufacturer it is based upon false beliefs and false definitions of love. And so... The emotion of fear, once you've processed it, and it's only once you've processed it that you feel this, you sort of, you don't value it anymore. Like you don't, you don't, you don't nurse it or look after it or value it as a decision-making tool or anything anymore. And, and, and it's, in, it's interesting that when you're going through it, you think it's going to be the very worst thing you can experience, but afterwards you realise that actually... It, it's the it's the least real thing that you experience. It's really weird. It's like a and, and it's very hard to describe. Uh, I'm struggling to find any words to describe it. So, um, and my own vocabulary in the English language isn't good enough to, <laughs> to come up with good words. But, um, but from an emotional perspective, it's quite unusual emotion because what it, 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 it governs your life until you feel it. And once you've felt it and you've really gone through this big global barrier, you know, this, this global barrier here, um, once you get through it, you realise that it didn't really mean anything at all. Okay. <laughs> it's real weird. Okay, yeah. yeah. And, and once it happens, you start having the pain-based emotions and false belief-based emotions start popping up from your hurt self, from the pain. And um, and that's always an indication that you've dealt with some of that global terror, you know. So so the key is, I find, is to have firstly some faith that fear is not something that belongs in a person who's at one with God, because it. And I'm not saying it doesn't belong by force. It just doesn't. It's not even there. And the reason why is because you know all the truths, and once you know all the truths, fear disappears. So fear is only an emotion that's generated by false beliefs. Does that make sense? And that's what I'm saying. Once you've felt it, you realise that, and then you realise, wow, it's like, you just don't value it anymore. It's quite a remarkable type of emotion to feel. And, and it's very liberating for that reason. So, so my suggestion is allow yourself. See, at the moment, what's happening is it's sort of like a, you, you feel afraid, but you're not tolerating it on any level at all at this stage. And, and that's what I observe most people doing. They, they're not tolerating the emotion of fear at all. They, they just they feel it and then instantly they're doing something to avoid it. Instantly. It's just like w without any thought or even a desire to even sit there and feel the emotion of fear. It's just almost instant. Bang, they're off doing something else. And, and what I'm suggesting to you is as soon as you feel it and you notice yourself go to do something else, stop, come back. Allow yourself to remember what you were remembering at the time. Allow yourself to feel what you're feeling at the time. And then sit with the feeling for as long as you can. Right? And, and my suggestion is to sit with it. Like, I've had to sit with mine for... Like, before I started feeling it, I sat with the feeling of fear for four to six hours every day, probably for quite some time. Um, and when I say quite some time, it's probably about nine months or eight months. Um, for me, and then, um, and then I had the breakthroughs into feeling it, actually feeling it, and that lasted me for me. It was three and a half months that that lasted. Um, yeah. So I'm just wondering, 
that before it. Like I think when I go, think about it, I'll be just sitting there going, okay, well, <laughs> you know, is that just continuing? What I did was I that? purposely went to my bed, laid down and just breathed very, very deeply and allowed myself to think about what it was that I was terrified of and I just kept diaphragmatically breathing. And I would, and and eventually there would be a lot of pain in my body start coming up because fear, uh, pain is is caused by the by the repulsion of fear. So 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 you're there, you're feeling the propulsion of fear, repulsion of fear in that moment. And so there's a lot of pain in your body. So you have to tolerate, be able to learn to tolerate quite extreme amounts of pain sometimes. And and I used to lay there like that every day. Um, there's very few days that I didn't do it for for, for eight to nine months. Um, we were just laid like that for three or four. Now, I've, I had a lot of fear, of course, because I've been tortured three or four times and, and my death was torture as well. So, um, you know, where you haven't had that, so, you know, obviously it will be shorter. Uh, if you're sincere about doing it, it'll be much shorter. Um, but the key is to lay there with uh, with that feeling and breathe like... And create the environment to do it. Um, you know what I see a lot of people doing is they create a very busy environment around them, which actually helps detune you from your fear. And and it's, so it's not creating a soul space to feel your fear. So my suggestion is to allow yourself to settle with the feeling. And, and for me, it was like lying on my bed, breathing deeply for, you know, like I said, four to five, four to six hours sometimes a day. And um, what I used to do, um, sometimes is I used to. Um, get up straight away in the morning, as soon as it was daybreak, six o'clock or whatever. I used to have something, usually some fruit, something light to eat. I'd, I'd go for a run <coughs> just to get my body moving and body functioning, a bike ride, run or do some exercise of some kind for a half an hour or more and just to get all the blood pumping and everything. Um, I'd come back, have a shower and then I'd day on the bed um, just breathing for for hours at a time, yeah. And and what that did was it uh, helped me, allow, it, it, allowed, it, it allowed me to be more sensitive to my pain and the relationship between my pain and my fear. It also allowed me to feel the sensation of fear in my body and get used to feeling that sensation of fear. And eventually it got to the point where I had these quite large experiences which lasted again, four to six hours, but they were quite intense uh, experiences um, where my whole body would go into cramping and, and lock up and, and everything. And um, that would last usually anywhere from two to six hours. And a few times I passed out <laughs> and I lost consciousness um, during that phase because I stopped, my, my body would stop breathing as well. And, and and eventually what would happen there is I'd, I'd stop breathing and I'd stop breathing for long enough to pass out. Um, and obviously your body eventually breathes. As soon as you pass out, you start breathing again. Because I've had <coughs> moments and where I am locking up and yep. but then I freak out thinking, is it spirits what's going or on? what's yeah, going yeah. on? And yeah, then most like, people ah. freak out then, you know. Because if I passed out, I'd be like, holy crap, you know. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was a bit stressful the first time. After a while I got used to it, but... And what I found after that was that I would sleep often for 24 hours once I started. So I'd, so I'd, so I'd have this fear. Well, I, the only thing I can describe it as is a fear fit sort of thing. Um, where I'd have a fear fit. Um, it'd last from anywhere from two to six hours. And in, in, at start, six hours. But it was like cramp for six hours. So it was pretty intense. And then I would, after that happened, I would uh, pass out generally. Um, and then... Uh, I'd wake up, uh, well, well, the first time, 36 hours later. <laughs> mm. Second time was about um, 24 hours later. Uh, and then sort of reduced down until three months, three and a half months of that. And I probably was five minutes, five minutes, uh, where it'd just be intense for five minutes so I wouldn't pass out. The very first few times I passed out, but after that I didn't pass out. Um, 
Uh, but I would sleep a lot afterwards, uh, and my body would feel really relaxed. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I'd, I'd, wa I'd wake up going, "Oh, I feel so good." And it's like, <laughs> you know, you really notice it. Um, yeah, so so that's what happened to me. But but don't be too afraid because that, that's pretty intense, and I don't think there'd be too many people on earth who will have to go through that. But um, but but once you go through that, it was sort of like. Um, I'd go through that. You know, the first first few weeks was a bit intense, um, as you can imagine, and then it slowly lessened in time period and time frame. And if, after a month or so, that'd last an hour or or less. And then after a few months, that'd last you know 15 minutes. And then three months, it was five minutes. And then after three and a half months, I didn't have them anymore. Mm. And uh, and after I had that experience, which happened. Um, well, 17 or so years ago now. Um, I think it was about that, 17 years ago or so. And once I had that experience, um, my my feeling about fear was totally different after that. Like, totally different. I was not afraid of the same things I was afraid of anymore. Um, even if I was afraid, I never acted upon it. and never Never chose to do things in it. Never lived by it after that. Yeah, just completely different. Life was completely different. And I remember after that was when the very first time I remember waking up without dread. I used to, every day of my life until then, I used to wake up feeling dread. Like every day I'd be worried that something really bad was going to happen today. Yeah. And, uh, and after I dealt with my fear, that all had gone as well. So I woke up feeling happy and refreshed, um, not, not feeling like terrified and afraid and like something dreadful was going to occur. So is that then different to this global? No, that was what I was feeling. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. My mind was pretty big, obviously, because um, of the different events that have happened in my life and so forth. Um, but the average person on earth, you know, won't won't have it that intensely. I feel, and and in fact, probably have a just a small portion of that. Um, yeah. But it was a it was an intense experience, but. But after I'd gone through it, I knew I had to go through it before I began going through it. But after I went through it, it was like, I'm so happy I've gone through that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, no. and, and everything after that changed quite significantly in my life, actually. Um, very significantly in my life, things changed after that. And that was before I even had any inkling to or desire to reconnect with God as well. So that happened without sort of God being present, if you like, in my life. So, um, so I felt very alone going through it and nobody really understood it. There was only two or three occasions where people saw me going through it and in each occasion uh, they called, they called uh, the hospital and had me taken to the hospital. Um, so I learned very quickly not to bother anybody else with it. Um, yeah, two, two occasions were way before then. And only one occasion when I was doing it properly that that somebody noticed and decided to do something about it because people stress out about it, right? You know, yeah. So that that was a bit of a problem. So I so basically I learnt to do it by myself with no one around after that, um, and that was always better as well because then I didn't have to bear their projections and their fear and their. It was hard enough dealing with your own fear than dealing with the projections of fear from other people who were worried about your health or whatever. And so, um, but I, I, what happened for me was I had these kind of experiences of quite a few times through my life before I chose to actually address them. And I had, I had five of these events in my life. The very first one was when I was 17. And that's what, I, and by the time I was 33, which is, uh, it was about 36 when I, or 35 when I dealt with these things. By the time I was 33, I knew I was going to have to deal with it because I'd have five of the events up to then. And uh, some of the events were quite intense, um, where I, um, I uh, you know, would stop breathing, and I was with other people, and they would rush me to hospital, of course. Um, and then the doctors would put me in scanners and, you know, all the, all the, money, <laughs> all the things they do, right? Um, and they, they put you in all these things, and... 
and you come out with a clean bill of health and they've got no idea what's going on, right? And uh, so they had no idea what was happening at all. Uh, each time, and, and after the first two times, uh, the first time I got a house call from a doctor, my mother triggered all that because of her fear, and then the second time it happened, I was with a guy and we were travelling we're travelling on the road actually and it happened and um, and they took me to hospital and I was and uh, they couldn't find anything wrong and when I went home I slept for for about 30 hours or so and that was the second time I was 27 then and then I had two three more occasions but I didn't tell anybody after that because it was because it was too much trouble trying to explain it all to everybody I just sort of accepted it as a part of my life and and then when I was 35, I realised, yeah, this is fear, and I and I need to, I need to deal with it, and I need to process it properly, and and the best way to do that is to it, the body. Like by then, I started to trust the body. You know how the body works and moves, and by then, I started to trust that you know emotions could be released and those kind of things. So, so that's what I chose to do, yeah. um, and and looking back on it now, I'm so glad that nobody interfered with me doing it because uh, if, if somebody had interfered with it um, I, I, it would have taken much longer to, to address yeah so so that that was my experience but as I, as I'm saying that's not going to be the average person's experience but you will have moments where your whole body locks up like a cramp and you you, you wear and the key is to breathe the br to breathe through the whole process allow allow the breathing to like allow your body to feel what it's feeling and and it, it's a part of the experience of terror and um and then you'll probably find afterwards that you'll need a good rest you know so yeah so it's just trusting in your body as well to let it do what it needs to do yes um there is one thing about the breathing i find I can breathe myself i feel like i'm breathing down here but i'm kind of breathing out of it is mm -hmm. When you breathe, well, uh, yeah, most you're mostly breathing in your chest, don't you? So, yeah. Mm. And when I focus, I, I feel used like to breathe only in my chest um, mm. and not in my tummy at all. But but what I found to break that was, mm. um, I think we showed you some years ago actually, uh, the filling up your tummy first. So when you breathe in, fill up your tummy first, and then fill up your chest. And then let it all out with a great big whoosh. <laughs> you know what I mean? So fill up your tummy first. <sighs> Does that make sense? And after a while, what happens is it starts triggering your fear. And that's why most people go into that, what's that state called uh, when they do breathe deeply? Hyperventilation. Yeah. Um, so I find now that doesn't happen to me when I do that, but when I started it did. I used to get into that state pretty fast, actually, within probably a few breaths, you know, it's like 10 or 15 breaths. Um, and uh, that's also when my asthma disappeared at the same time. Um, I didn't get sick again for nearly 10 years after that uh, at all, <laughs> whereas I used to get sick every month. So that was quite a contrast. Um, so quite a lot of things changed physically and quite a lot changed um, in my life as well at the same time after that. Um, yeah, so I, it was quite... Uh, dealing with fear is quite a positive, a very positive experience actually. Yeah. Now, if you, were, if you had people around you who, who you know, knew the soul and knew the body and how it all works and they didn't get stressed out about somebody passing out because of they can't breathe or whatever, then then it wouldn't be so bad to do it with people, but most people are pretty stressed about all that. So, so you know, at the end of the day, it's quite difficult. So what I'm suggesting is it took me uh, quite a few months leading up to that where I allowed myself to feel my fear in my body, allowed myself to tolerate more and more higher levels of pain and so forth. And then I got to the point where I actually went through the experiences. The same experiences I had when I was younger, those five times, so I recognised the experience. And so, uh, so I decided this time to go through the experiences properly. And, uh, and then as I did that, it lessened and lessened until it disappeared. Mm. Yeah. And everything's different after that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah.
can't wait. <laughs> my life's just driven by fear, so I'm like... Yeah, most, but everyone's life is, so, so that's the thing. Yeah, so um, I feel that most people, uh, and I don't know if I've mentioned all that before to anybody. Have I? Have I? No, I don't think the audience... I've talked a little bit about it, but not mentioned much detail about it. Um, but, you know, most people don't... This is what I'm saying. Once you choose to feel your emotions, you don't feel the need to share what you've been through with anybody. It's like um, you, you, you just... It just feels so great to have done it. And once you've done it, sometimes you even forget that you've done it. Um, it's because there's no emotional signature to it anymore. So, so you know, that's probably why I haven't even mentioned it. It's because it's just like done, so it's done and it's over and I don't think about it at all, um, except if I'm talking to people about their fear sometimes. Um, but I haven't explained it to anybody. And the only persons I've probably explained a bit more detail to is Mary, because she, it's what she's going through now. And, um, you know, probably Corny and others of the 14 who are going to go through similar experiences. Um, at some point we'll talk about it more. But generally, once you've addressed this global fear, everything starts changing quite significantly. So that's the thing to look forward to yeah. and to have faith in as well. Yeah. So that's my suggestion. Breathing. Yep. Uh, tolerating higher and higher levels of pain and, uh, and terror. In your body, in your in your body, allow your body to do what it does. Stop judging what your body's doing, but um, take care about sharing it with people because, uh, unfortunately, nowadays most people get stressed out about it, and and they'll try to, you know, take you to a doctor or do something about it, which shuts you down. Yeah, good. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> <laughs> a few questions about that. Um, uh, can we just move these chairs back? And uh, okay. so we start with Karen up the back, um, and we'll come down to Thalia at the front. Thanks, Karen. What's the place of prayer in through all of that? Well, at the time, I uh, sorry, uh, am I on? Am I on? Yes. At the time, I. Um, as I said, I wasn't very connected to God, and I didn't really. Um, I felt God. I felt God didn't want me anymore. Basically, that was my feelings at that time. So, so I, I didn't pray at all, <laughs> to be honest. Um, I just decided to go through the experience. So I actually went through the experience without praying or anything like that at the time. I'm not suggesting you do that. The role of prayer is firstly to help you tolerate higher and higher levels of terror because it because it because you you need to learn to feel the terror you need to be more sensitive to it so it's about allowing yourself to become more sensitive to the terror so i'd pray about that first and then the second thing i'd pray about is that once you do start having an experience like i described to allow yourself to go through the experience and trust god trust that God's made your body and God's made your soul in such a way that it's a part of you releasing the emotion. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I thought, I was hoping there was a role for praying to God. I was just wondering, when you're in it, are you just so flat out being in it that you can't do anything else? Yeah. Yeah. And that's the same with every emotion, Karen. Right. You'll find if you're really in an emotion, you're just really in the emotion and... In that moment, most people don't even think to pray. It's the lead up that you need to, you know, you need to have faith that you're going to get through it. You need to, you know, it's the lead up that needs to change where you really need probably a lot, a lot of prayer. But as I, as I've just explained to you, getting through terror, you can do it without, without God. There's plenty of spirits in the spirit world have done without God. Right? So you can do it without God. So if you, if God's around and you know God's around, it should be easier, right? Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm just wondering, can you experience this terror without actually challenging, having challenged all your addictions? So you can just C certainly yep. you can. I, I had challenged all my addictions. Okay. Um, I knew the terror was there. Yeah. I started to allow myself. I realised that at some point I was going to have to feel it. As I explained, I had those four or five uh, five experiences. Mm -hmm. prior to the experience, uh, you know, the three-month experience, uh, which indicated to me that I had a lot of terror in my body for some reason. I didn't understand mm -hmm. why I did. 
um, at all, in fact. And and in in the second group of emotions, when I did dealt with the actual terror, I still really didn't understand why, because I I had yet to have the memories of who I was, but I had started to have memories of getting tortured, which I didn't understand at all, and I just allowed them to be. Does that make sense? I just I didn't understand them, but they were there, so I thought, well, I need to feel them. So, so I decided to feel them, and it wasn't until seven years later, actually, that I understood why I had them. Mm. So you don't necessarily need to like analyze what the terror is about you just need to no. feel it no and yeah. so it'd be good to just make a list of all your fears then and just would it be yeah it can be but at the end of the day it's your openness to feeling mm. the experience of fear that you really need to work on the most and remember that's emotional work that's not intellectual yeah. so this is about allowing yourself to start to um el- embrace the emotion of terror rather than always preventing the emotion of terror. Sometimes we make lists, and I, I used to be a list maker. <laughs> um, I, I was uh, always making lists, yeah. always. And I used to be a list maker mostly to prevent my terror from being experienced. It, it helped me avoid it. Does that make sense? So, um, yeah, I don't know whether making lists can really m- help you experience the fear. If you're not feeling your fears at all, then of course making lists might help expose some of them. But at the end of the day, it is a will-based choice that you're going to need to make to experience the emotion of terror. Mm. We'll talk more about that in the second yeah. session that we do. Cool. Yeah. Right. Okay. Now, I don't want to spend too much time on this, guys, because, the, because we are going to talk more about this in the second session, all right? This global emotion of terror. So what I would like to do is uh, talk to you as a group about another subject, if that's all right. <coughs> well, it's a related subject, so... <laughs> <laughs>